the following world television premiere is a special presentation of the Discovery Channel. than anyone could ever have conceived. Our ambassador in Saigon, Graham Martin, he wanted to stay until the embassy was burned down. It was clear to me that only a few would make it. My people will be betrayed. In this type of an operation, you need one person in charge. We didn't have that. We didn't have it, and it caused utter confusion. Well, with the uh, cop to Dallas at your 9 o'clock, and that about three quarters of a mile, it's still at 5 million. Okay, we're stopping. For 15 years, American troops had fought to prevent a communist takeover of South Vietnam. The U.S. military opposed the communists with the world's most powerful conventional weapons. Hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese were killed. And Americans were dying too, more than 58,000 in Vietnam. And there was still no victory. With deaths rising and no end in sight, many Americans turned against the war, and Washington looked for a way out. In 1973, in Paris, the United States agreed that U.S. combat troops would go home. Secretary of State Kissinger supported the White House view that they had found peace with honor. All but a few U.S. troops did go home, yet the war against the North went on. Washington continued to provide Saigon with military supplies, but from now on, the South Vietnamese would have to fight alone. Two years later, in 1975, the communists launched the assault that would lead to the reunification of the two Vietnams. In March, battles exploded across South Vietnam as the country's president ordered his troops to retreat. In just four weeks, the bulk of the South's army collapsed before the onslaught from the north, and almost all of its territory was occupied. By April, little more than the capital, Saigon, remained. In Washington, Congress rejected pleas from both the White House and the beleaguered government of South Vietnam for emergency aid to combat the communist onslaught. On April 28th, the North Vietnamese Army surrounded Saigon. Trapped inside the city were 5,000 Americans and an unknown number of South Vietnamese who had been promised sanctuary if Saigon fell. Nobody knew how much time was left to rescue them. When I added up the figures of the people we would have to be evacuating, I was appalled. The numbers ran up into the millions. We'd work with people who put together the special branch of the police, we had basically constructed their intelligence, South Vietnamese intelligence apparatus. All these people felt they would be in imminent jeopardy if the communists took over. There was just a pall of impending doom that had hit the city. A barely, barely repressed panic, particularly when it became clear that to, to even 
even the most uh, politically uneducated Saigonese, that the country was going down the tubes. At that moment, we are living in fear. I believe that Saigon will be lost very soon. The people thought Saigon will lose the war, so they were very afraid. They tried to escape from Vietnam at any cost. My family was one of the people who sold everything, sold the jewels, and got all the money, withdraw the money from the bank in order to change the U.S. dollars, in order to have some money to get out from the country. The pressures on us to help these people with their many, many requests were tremendous and heartbreaking. In Washington, with events slipping out of control, there was a conflict of priorities within the administration. Well, the nightmare scenario was that the Vietnamese would rush into town and capture everybody that was left. I was responsible for getting the Americans out of South Vietnam under conditions in which the defenses were collapsing and collapsing very rapidly. My purpose was to save as many uh, South Vietnamese as we could and to get the maximum amount of time to uh, to evacuate uh, South Vietnamese who had relied on us. The Pentagon was primarily concerned with evacuating Americans as rapidly as possible and didn't care so much about the Vietnamese. I said to the president, Mr. President, it's all over. We've got these divisions moving in. We have lost the uh, best part of the South Vietnamese forces, after the collapse in the Central Highlands, we've lost uh, the northern two-thirds of the country. Uh, the situation is desperate, and we, there is no way that we can survive. It's all over. Secretary of Defense Schlesinger wanted us to get out more quickly. Secretary Kissinger and myself, we believed, and that was our policy, that we should stay as long as we possibly could and evacuate as many South Vietnamese as possible. I can't recall a, a precise definitive number. My best recollection would be in the range of 150,000, maybe 200,000, of the South Vietnamese who had loyally and vigorously supported the United States in the battle with the North Vietnamese. But with Saigon surrounded, the only practical way to rescue large numbers of people was from the city's airport called Tan Sunut on the edge of the capital. For eight days, a small-scale evacuation had already been underway. The demand for space on the evacuation flights was intense. There were thousands of people in line. They were begging us to save their lives. And if we didn't give them the authority to get on that aircraft, they believed that they were doomed. In terms of fear, panic, and mayhem in the capital, uh, really, you had a trapped population that was looking to the U.S. government and to their own government to somehow get them out of it. I was not only impatient, I was getting desperate. We were dependent upon Tan Sanu remaining open so that we could move in large numbers of aircraft and move people out en masse. And as the North Vietnamese got closer and closer to Saigon, the predictions of when Tan Sanut would fall became increasingly critical. U.S. military staff based at the airport had been flying a steady stream of Americans and South Vietnamese out of the country. The staff belonged to the defense attaché's office, the DAO, and they wanted the evacuation to proceed as quickly as possible. Key decisions, however, were not made at the DAO, but at the American embassy. It wanted to go slowly so as not to panic the Saigon population. The defense attaché's office was based at one end of Tansunut Airport. 
The airport itself on the northern edge of the city was four miles from the American embassy located in the heart of Saigon. The fear at the embassy was that a hasty evacuation might provoke a confrontation with the South Vietnamese army. We were walking on a knife edge throughout the evacuation process of knowing that we had to do things but making sure that we did not do things too soon because if we did anything too soon, we would set off a panic, we would lose the cooperation uh, of the Vietnamese government, and we might risk, and there were some intelligence indications that we had, we might risk that some of the South Vietnamese military would say, if we're gonna go down, you're gonna go down with us.